this leads me to my next question because we're talking about primer fields. The the sun. Uh, a lot of people say when the primer fields collapse, the sun will go into a low mode, like a oh, low mode. Oh, okay, yeah, right. And my curiosity is that how do we? Um, how did you find this low glow mode information in historic data? And is there a way we can monitor it nowadays? Is there, is there what is science is looking at right now to keep an eye on that particular uh, situation? One indication is that the sun continues to weaken is the, the larger uh, coronal holes that we're seeing. In around 2007, they, they noticed some holes in the corona around the sun. Uh, and uh, that was that caused headlines in 2007. Now we see bigger ones every day, and uh, nobody even talks about it anymore. Uh, but uh, what what happened is the the corona holes that open up that also allow larger volumes of cosmic ray flux to come to the Earth, which increases cloud formation, which increases flooding events, which increases drought events. Uh, all these things are happening. So that's one factor we can uh, look at that uh, to project forward how, how far we are in that uh, progression. Uh, I would say the tripping point will be in the 2030s when we see the solar, uh, the temperature of the solar surface itself diminishing. That's, uh, that's to me, uh, is the, would be the tripping point to really watch for. Okay. Uh, I understand that, too, um, with the... Uh not happening for a while and you're right the corona hole situation is normal now people see corona holes and don't think anything about it and but this is really adding up to something big the increase of, of corona holes the weakening of corona um, i've heard that if the sun's output is at 40 percent that's considered low glow mode and some right now it's been speculated that we're somewhere in the 60s, the mid 60s, 70 percent. So, but you're saying that we could possibly the tipping point for that particular moment is going to be sometime after the 2030s. Yeah, uh, right now the the sun, the the radiated energy from the sun is 100 uh, percent. It hasn't diminished yet. Okay. It, it diminishes about uh, one or two degrees over the solar cycles, but uh, the, the surface temperature of the sun is still steady as a rock. But once you get once you lose the solar winds, when the, the plasma inflow has diminished to the point that the solar winds no longer steam off, then uh, then the surface temperature will diminish. And once it's diminishing, then you have to sort of look forward to the point. Uh, you have to be prepared because then really nobody knows at which point uh, the, the primer fields begin to fail. Right. Once they fail, they, it's, they turn off. That's it. Uh, that's it. Uh, and uh, so I gave it 20 years. It's, it's sort of a, a, an average. Uh, the other, there's another measurement uh, that I come up with when, when I look at the beryllium measurements for the time of the start of the last ice age. Uh, there is a, a spike that went up from the interglacial to the glacial, and that's a 60% increase in the uh, beryllium level. Now, if this is, if the beryllium levels are uh, a linear reflection of the increase in solar cosmic reflux, then uh, we will be at the 60% level uh, much sooner than the 2050s. The, 
the Ulysses spacecraft also saw the solar uh, cosmic reflux diminishing by 20% in 10 years. So wow. for to get to get to the 30 to, to get to the 60% level, there we're about 30 years in. That makes it about 2030. That means that the the collapse, the start of the next ice age could happen as soon as the 2030s. Well, I kind of hope it's more like the 2050s. Uh, so, but maybe perhaps it's halfway in between there. These measurements are not exact measurements. Right. Uh, we, we see the 30, the 60% spike at uh, the, the start of the last ice age. It might not be a linear relationship. It, it, uh, the helium levels might uh, diminish uh, less than in linear uh, projections. I, I don't know that. There's too little data on that. Uh, but uh, my 2050 forecast and the 2030 beryllium level projection, uh, well, somewhere in that area, it could be in the 2040s, that makes it about 30 years from now. Uh, I think the 30 years from now is probably a good time frame to, to, to prepare for. And 30 years is plenty enough time to get the Earth ready for it. Sure. And we understand, too, that a lot of this um, forecasting is based on historical data. And the, the, the part that's really sobering about everything that you talk about, that you know John Casey talks about, Valentina Zarkova, and other good scientists across the uh, community, is that uh, the, the data that we're getting now is lining up to historical minimums that we've had in the past. So... I know Mari had another question since we're on that topic of carbon-14. Well, actually, you sort of answered the question I was going to ask about carbon-14 and beryllium and how significant um, those measurements are in the cyclic nature of uh, minimums and, and whatnot. My, my one question, when I was going through your website and your material, uh, I found it interesting you know, because in this community, people very much agree that the Milankovitch cycle um, does have an effect on on cooling, and, and there is that. Now, you said on your site that that's not so much to be a concern as it, it's not to, to be as much of a concern as what's going on with the sun. What holes in the Milankovitch theory have you found um, to say that? I'm just curious. The Milankovitch cycle theory, I guess you understand it. Uh, it the, whole, the big hole is that uh, the total amount of solar radiation that the Earth receives doesn't change no matter how uh, the, the, the spin axis is tilted. It doesn't change the total energy received by the Earth. Uh, it causes some uh, hemispheric distributions, uh, minute changes, and it causes some uh, seasonal distribution, uh, minute changes too. But it doesn't change the total energy received on the Earth. Also, the eccentricity variation that the amount of, uh, that the Milankovitch cycles also include don't change the total energy received or in the years. Uh, it's always the same. Uh, so if we have uh, the same energy received on the years, no matter what the circumstances are, it doesn't it doesn't uh, give us enough. Uh, the goal is to say this is causing the ice ages. Uh, look at the, 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 the when the ice age starts, the difference is so dramatic that the entire world becomes uninhabitable. Uh, if you look at all the uh, the ice core records that we dug about the ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland. When the ice age starts, 
it starts steeply. It doesn't start gradually. It, it starts steeply. Right. And when, when it ends, it ends steeply. Uh, the, the transitions are big and radical. And the Milankovitch cycles uh, come, don't come anywhere close to it. Now, the Milankovitch cycles are... They, they, they look quite uh, convincing. But uh, I would say the, uh, the cycles which the longer which cycles incorporate, like the, the tilt axis uh, wobbling and uh, the orientation changing for the 1,000 year cycles and the 100,000 year eccentricity cycles, these are subsequent cycles. These are not causative. These, these uh, uh, or uh, these, uh, what do you call it, orbital cycles, they become affected by the ice age itself. When the, the primal fields collapse, the entire uh, electromagnetic geometry that affects also the orbits change. And it, so, so we will see that the eccentricity changes in the rhythm in which the ice age changes. It's not the, that the Milankovitch cycles are the causative thing. They are looking at effects of it. Uh, and that's why I say, uh, forget about it. A lot of people saying, just forget about the Milankovitch cycles, because it, also historically they don't add up. The, if you take it back historically over a long period, they're sometimes 10,000 years out and sometimes uh, behind and sometimes 10,000 years before. Uh, that's you a can't big have. Yeah, that's a big gap. And you can't have an effect uh, before, it, uh, before it supposedly happened. Uh, so the, the, I don't put any weight in it at all.